I'm Donna Smith and I live in Shetland, the most northerly part of the UK. I thought it would be a good idea to come onto YouTube and to share some of the things that uh, go on behind the scenes of my business. Uh, also some of the things that go on in the craft. Uh, have a look at some of the things I'm knitting and to share some things with you that uh, I think you might find interesting. So um, I want to welcome everyone here today. Um, it's really good to see you. If you haven't uh, come across me before, you might find it useful to watch my first ever video um, called Lang Sound Yarn, which explains a bit about my business, about the yarn, um, how it's produced, and also the natural dyeing side of things. Um, we've had a, quite a few busy days here in Shetland. We tend to be governed by the weather quite a lot up here. Um, this, uh, being on an island, we get a lot of windy weather and it's sometimes it's quite wet, but generally the wind is the, the problem here. Um, so when it is a fine spell of weather, you have to try and do as much as possible. So on Saturday, we um, clip the sheep or sheared the sheep. We call it clipping in Shetland. Um, so that's what we did on Saturday. So first of all, we had to get them rounded up or we had to car them, as we call it here, and get them into the crow or to the pain where they're going to be sheared. So um, we got them, uh, we got them in, uh, and my little sheep dog Sky, she did quite a good job of getting them in. One of the biggest problems we have here is that some of our sheep are very tame. So and if you try and chase them, then they just come towards you. So we had my dad was at the top of the, the field, um, and some of them was running towards him. Um, and some of them were going away from me and then some of them came towards me and uh, so we had to, the dog did a good job of, uh, of getting them all into the pain. So that's sort of her first ever um, go at getting them in for clipping. So they're clipped using the electric shears um, so that our neighbours come and, and do that. Um, so we're very grateful for them to do that for us. Um, and then I roll up the fleeces and bag them up. And then they go up to my garage and I will sort them out into colours and uh, then they'll eventually get sent away and made into Langswound yarn. Um, on Monday, I had uh, quite a busy day dyeing a batch of indigo. So indigo dyeing is a, a different process to natural or using, using um, plant material that you, you find here uh, grown wild in Shetland. Um, so with indigo dyeing, you make a big vat and basically the yarn is dipped into the vat and then it's taken out and when it's taken out, it has to react with the air um, to create the blue of the indigo. Um, and I like to do that outside. You can do it inside, but it's quite messy. Um, so that was quite a big day on, on Monday. Um, it's quite a good way to, to get a large range of colours by over dyeing the indigo um, with, or, or dye, dyeing over other colours that I've dyed. So I had um, a sort of a range of colours using so i had i had yellow which was using dock leaves i had um sort of a greeny color using nettles and then i had more of a sort of slightly orange yellow using onion skins um and i also had other shades that i i did using rhubarb leaves and and other um sort of plant material so by over dyeing the indigo on those, those colours, you get a, quite a large range of colours, large range of shades. And it's always quite exciting because I never quite know what's going to come out of the vat. Um, because different times of year that you're harvesting the other material, you might get different shades of yellow or you might get, depends on how uh, many times I've used the dye bath. You might get it might be a lighter shade um, and then when you over dye that with indigo you get different shades um, so it's always a it's always a really busy day um, i try and do as much as i can to use the vat as much as possible um, so i dip it in the vat and then i hang it outside on the fences so i really need it to be quite a um quite well the wind to be quite low because if it's 
sort of normal Shetland weather, then it all tangles in the fence and it's it's not very good. Um, so that was Monday, so we had a busy day on Monday and now of course it's all hanging up inside the house drying. So I've got in this room, I've got two racks, um, two clothes, horses with full of uh, indigo dyed yarn and there's one upstairs as well. So, um, so that should be dry tomorrow. Um, and then they'll be wound into skeins and labelled. And then I will have them at uh, the event that I'm doing in two weeks' time in Shetland. So that's the middle of July, um, which is the, the tall ships are coming to Lairwick. Um, so that's, uh, there's lots of events planned and I will have a stall on the pier in Lairwick. Um, and there'll be lots of other craft people and there will be lots of food and live music and it's going to be very exciting. Um, so after that event finishes the end of uh, July, it's for four days, um, starting on the 25th or 26th, I'm not sure, of July. Um, then uh, once that's finished, I will take stock of what I have left and put that online so you can keep your eye out for that. Um, generally what I do with my naturally dyed yarns, and you can see some of them behind me here, is I dye that in batches. So I'll spend maybe um, sort of six weeks dyeing, and then at the end of that period I will take photos of them and get them online, and then I have a shop update. Um, I've only done one this last year um, for various reasons, illnesses and um, trying to, you know, catch up with admin and things like that. But the, the dye pots are going all the time now at the moment. Um, so there should be more updates in the future. Um, and uh, so I'm hoping the next one will be sort of beginning of August or the middle of August. Um, unless I completely sell out the tall ships, you never know. But my next batch of yarn is on its way. It's being spun at the moment. Um, and as well as having the, the, the double knit, um, I will also have a lace weight, which is very exciting. So I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing that. Um, I thought it'd be quite good to show you some of the things that I'm, that I'm knitting at the moment. Um, I haven't been knitting a, a lot lately, but I've got a few things on the wires, as we say. So <clears throat> the first thing I've got is the wearing jumper. So um, I've got the body down here and also a sleeve. And there is another sleeve somewhere. Um, and the wearing jumper, this is the wearing jumper here on the model. And that one was uh, it's out of my book, which I published last year. I took a couple of years to write it um, and I published it last year in September. So the, the book is called Lang Sound, a Shetland Yarn. Time modern knitting patterns inspired by my island life. And it's, um, as it says on the cover, time patterns using Lang Sound double knit yarn. So we've got um, a range of accessories. So we've got um, a cowl, a scarf, uh, a hat, um, and mitts. And there's two jumpers and two cardigans. And also in there, there's some. Um, uh, sort of a story about the the sort of background of my business, the background of the yarn, uh, and also a bit about the uh, natural dyeing, and a bit about uh, sort of what you need to be able to start your projects about swatching and and things like that. And then we've got the the patterns in the book. Um, so the the pattern that I'm knitting at the moment, the wearing jumper. <coughs> This one here, so that's the, the one that's on the model there. So what you do here is you knit the body and the sleeves like I've done I've done here. So we've got a, the sleeves and the body, and then I will join them together. So I'll join them together and start knitting across. Um, and then as you knit, as you come to the sort of the seam parts here, you do uh, it decreases, which then gives you the the shape. Um, you can maybe see it a bit better on here, but the it's not just a, a standard raglan shape, which would go just straight up or diagonally up. So I wanted more of a shaped um, raglan. So you do more decreases 
at the armpit and then it's a little bit less sloped and then there's more decreases as you go into the neck and that just gives it a little bit more shape and, and makes it a bit more snug around the, sho the shoulders. Um, and this neck, it's a fairly high neck, but you could do it. You could do it shorter if you wanted. I've seen some people doing that and it looks really nice. This one here on the model um, is size, I did it in size two. So this, the pattern is in <clears throat> nine different sizes. So it goes up from size one to nine. So from the fit bust, um, approximately 29.2. 25 inches up to 65.75 inches. Um, so this one that I knitted here was the fit bust number two, the fit bust 33.5. So on me it's quite fitted um, and that's what I wanted. So I, I wanted that that style. This There's gentle waist shape in there as well. You can leave that out if you prefer a straighter body. Um, the, this one that I'm knitting here is the next size up, so that's size three. So that will be slightly larger than that and I've not done any waist shaping. So it's gonna be slightly over, uh, slight, well, got a little bit of positive ease in it. Um, I am thinking that I'm gonna do another one, um, maybe in the natural dyed yarn, in the next size up. So it'll be a more overfitted um, sort of shape. This one here is knitted in, Shade Claude, uh, which is one of the Lang Sound double knit natural undyed colours. So it's got, it's a very dark brown, but it's also got quite a lot of grey flecks through it. So it's the sort of the look, the, not quite the Shetland black, but it's the, the sort of dark grey, dark brown. Um, Claude is a, is a name given to like a little piece of peat. So the peat that you would burn in your fire, um, and this colour reminded me of a peat, but Claude is just that little piece of peat. Um, so I actually got, a, I have another one here. So this one is in the Shetland black, and that, I knitted that in the, I knitted this in size two as well. So again, it's fitted on me, and it's the same size as this one. So um, I'm going to have a few jumpers of the same, but in different colours and different sizes, um, which is good when you, you know, wear them with different things. Um, and I've just written a blog post on the jumper if you want to find out more information on it. So that's on my website, on my blog, and I'll link to that on the show notes. Um, the wearing jumper, um, it got its name from just being a jumper that's really easy to wear. It's something that my dad always says that he would like just a good wearing jumper, something that you can wear to work in, that you can wear in the craft, or you can, uh, you know, you can wear to the shops or whatever, or it's something you can almost kind of dress up if you want. So it's just something that you can pull on and it's easy, easy to wear. So that's the wearing jumper. And there's also a wearing cardigan which is the cardigan version, um, and I'll, I'll show you that another time. Um, another cardigan that I've been, or a cardigan I've been knitting for a, a while is this one here, which is called the Thatch Cardigan, and that's in the book here by Erica Knight, um, and this is her book, text here. Uh, and it's 20 Timeless Garments Exploring Knit, Yarn and Stitch. And it's a really beautiful book. Um, there's so many patterns in here that I would like to knit. Um, and also just the, the photography in here is, is really nice. So she's got things that's inspired her. So here it's like the, the city, um, some pictures from the city that's inspired her. Um, also we've got um, so things like this that she's got um, sort of a, a, a grill or a mesh there on the pavement and that's inspired the texture of that jumper there. So and the layout to the book is, is really nice. So this one here um, that I've done is called Thatch. Um, it's done in, I've knitted it in Lang Sound double knit yarn as well. And it's 
completely in garter stitch. So I must say it took quite a while to do. Garter stitch is, is very easy, but it can be quite boring as well. But uh, I'll show you the, I've not blocked it yet. So it's just basically off the, the wires or off the needles. Um, it's done in, in garter stitch, as I say. So you've got like a, you cast on with one color, contrast color, and then you knit the rest in the, the main color. And the same with the sleeves, you do the sort of the cuffs in a contrast and color. Um, and the idea is you could turn them up, turn them back like that, and that'll give kind of a nice um, edge to your cardigan. <clears throat> um, you've got pockets here as well. So you, to begin with, you knit these little squares and then you knit the the bottom of the cardigan and you sort of pick up the, the pockets as you go along um, and then so I will have to stitch these down and run in the ends and then I will block it. I, I've made it quite a bit shorter than it's in is in the pattern because I wanted to wear it with dresses and almost more as a, a jacket um, but I think, I'm, I'm worried it's a little bit too short, but I think once I block it and stretch it out, then it should be okay. So I'll have to get that done shortly. Um, so hopefully by the, the next time I see you, I'll come back on here again. Um, um, hopefully try and do this every month. Um, so if you can join me again, that would be really good. Um, and you can press subscribe on the, on the link below. Um, and then you'll always see the videos. So next time, hopefully, I will be able to show you the finished version of this and hopefully it won't be too short. Um, so thank you very much for joining me. Um, hope to see you again and uh, goodbye.